Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in. My name is Skylar Hughes and you are listening to The Bird Herd. Joining us today are two players from the Rainbow Six Siege team, Zach Snail Canoozle and Royce McMahon Adams. I'd like to start by asking you guys a little bit about what you guys are here for with school. What are you guys major and what year are you guys? Uh, let's see. I'm freshman year arts technology major. I'm a freshman uh, major in actuarial science. How hard is it for you guys to balance your practice and school? Is it tough for you guys? I honestly don't find it to be tough. I just kind of screw around after class and eat flips and drink Arizona. Um, with me, my major hasn't really picked up at all yet, so it's not uh, that time consuming. So I, I do have a good amount of free time. Now, you, you specifically talked about bullying here. Um, do you find any comparisons between your skills you learn in bowling and skills you have inside the team? I mean, like bowling, like bowling and esports are similar in the fact that like hand-eye coordination is like pretty important in the game as well, like in bowling and in video games. So I feel like that kind of transfers over, and that's what makes me like better at video games and bowling together is because I have that advanced hand-eye coordination, and I'm practicing that very often, like in my life. Uh, tell me a little bit about you guys. Other than Rainbow Six, what do you guys en- enjoy doing? I don't really know, dude. I just really. I, I guess uh, just screwed around doing stupid stuff around campus or maybe <laughs> messing around with the other teams because, uh, let's see, what's his name? Bobby, a freaking Ethernet cord on the CSGO team. <laughs> he was like, the Ethernet cord comes with the team, dude. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> so I just ended up, I ended up playing CSGO for a bit. So, I mean, other than Rainbow Six, I guess I play that on the side. <laughs> How about you, Zach? Uh, So, as you heard, um, I'm on the bowling team here, as well as uh, outside of Illinois State, I run um, my own amateur league for uh, Rainbow Six, and I've been running that for about nine months with uh, two other people who I do do not live in Illinois. Um, So that's been pretty successful, and I'm also getting myself into another league to maybe start making money off of uh, running amateur siege leagues, and that's about it. So you said you've been running it for nine months. How long have you been gaming in general? Has this been something you've done for like your whole life, or is it a more recent hobby you've picked up? Uh, so with gaming in general, I've played kind of started when I was in about seventh grade with uh, Black Ops 2 on the Xbox 360. And more recently, coming to my freshman year of high school, I uh, built my first PC. And so after that, I kind of just moved over to all PC gaming because I enjoyed it more. The competition was a little bit more competitive, and I had there's more like opportunity on there. So then I picked up Siege about my junior year of high school, and I've been playing that game as, like, my sole game um, ever since. And, of course, you play the occasional Minecraft here and there because it's the best game of all time. But, uh, yeah, I've played Rainbow Six Siege for 18 months competitively. Nice. How about you, Royce? I play video games ever since, like, uh, I think kindergarten or so. Uh, But for me, I didn't really, like, play FPS shooters at all until, like, uh, I think, like, maybe Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 era. Like, my brother got a PS4, uh, PS3, <laughs> anyway, PS3, and then he got Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, so then I ended up playing, like, a crap ton with him, but, uh, I think my really defining FPS game would be Battlefield Bad Company 2, and then I stopped playing FPSs for a while, and just screwed around, I didn't really get PC till like, literally a year ago, and I surprisingly do well at it now, <laughs> so, I mean, that's just me. I know with some games, uh, there isn't a console option to be playing on, but it seems like, at least in my experience, I've seen a lot of people do start playing Siege on console first and then transition to PC, and you talked about that, Zach. Did you ever start playing Siege on PS4 until you switched over? So for me, most people that I meet while playing my competitive games actually did start on a console, but for me, like right after I hit my freshman year of high school, console was kind of like oblivious. I never bought that Xbox One. So I couldn't really, like, you couldn't really play any more games on there, and I didn't really like the control um, that the controller gave you. So most people, when they play Siege, they usually come from an Xbox or a console. Um, But for me, I was just straight out of the PC, so, like, it was more difficult to learn because I was on a, basically a tougher learning curve than everyone else when playing the game. I remember the only, like, good, like, FPS experience I had on PC back then was, like, Left 4 Dead 2, and I used to have, like, a crap box, like, laptop that ran it at, like, what, 15 FPS until, like, I eventually, like, upgraded, like, years later, but, uh, 
until that happened, I played a blunt load of Siege on Xbox. I got really good at it there. I think Siege was, like, literally the only game I actually decided to sink time and effort into, since it was, like, the only one that was entertaining. What? I guess that kind of answers this question, but what made you guys choose R6 over other FPS games like CSGO or Call of Duty for you, Zach? Well, um, originally, um, I had a friend who was uh, very fortunate to have a lot of money to throw around, and so since he had nobody to play video games with, I guess, he, uh, he bought me Siege and Overwatch at the same time, and so I had started on Overwatch, and those games were both new for me because I was basically couldn't find a new game to play. So I went back to the OG days of Minecraft for a while, and um, when I got those two games, I uh, realized that I didn't really like Overwatch because of its. There's in certain situations where you get in those um, areas where you just you're just not winnable. So I moved over to Siege because I felt that that was a uh, game that more fit my play style. There's more strategy involved, and then ever since there, I just couldn't get enough of it, and I'm always learning more every day that I play the game, so it keeps me engaged, and never have thought about putting the game down hmm. i think for me uh yeah like i said earlier siege is the only game that stuck uh i think the only game other than siege that stuck for me was like halo reach or something like that but even that was only entertaining for a while plus like playing a backwards compatible game on xbox one is obviously not going to last that long when it comes to multiplayer i guess and uh like plus the newer halo games are pretty bad so uh, yeah, I just kind of stuck with Siege since that's basically what my main friend group played like literally all the time. Like I just hop online, Siege. We got bored, Siege. Whatever random thing in life happened, we just said screw it, let's, let's play some Siege. And I just got really good at it like really quickly, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna stick with this game. Can you guys talk a little bit about your roles on the team? Um, for me, I'm kind of. I can kind of do whatever, whenever. I tend to be playing more on a, f um, a fragger role, but I can basically flex to any character in the game. So I just kind of play whatever's needed, go wherever's needed, and usually take on like um, a little bit more difficult task in the game. Um, basically, like trying to mess up their, sh like trying to infiltrate their defenses. Um, but I basically flex to any character. Uh, let's see. For me, that's a that's. That's a complex question, actually. <laughs> Basically, for me, I guess, would would also be a fragger in some situations, but let's say, I guess, <laughs> would, I technically, would I technically be personality, social ambassador to team? So how do you guys go about picking your operators? Is there anything you guys always lean towards? Is there a hard stuck meta that you guys only play the same operators every game, or do, how does it vary? So <clears throat> in Siege, they do have the, uh, in competitive play, they have the, uh, the ban... Um, phase before the match so we usually take away operators like uh, jackal nomad um, or sometimes stature or thermite or the hard breachers because uh, in the siege meta right now i mean it's kind of like a you it's a basic necessity every round um you need to bring a hard breacher so a thermite habana or a maverick and usually you like to bring a thatcher because it's the easiest way to get rid of all the electronic devices that they use on the reinforcements to get it open so those are like the two uh, main things that we bring all the time. We usually always run Thatcher Thermite. Um, and then uh, lately we've been running an IQ. Um, we kind of need, th that's like important. We can uh, pick up the electronics that they have going around so we can check for pulses. Um, just C4s that are hidden below um, like floors and stuff like that. Kind of just trying to limit the um, untimely deaths or the deaths where like you can't even see the guy that kills you. Um, and then we tend to run a uh, Zofia and um, sometimes a Jackal depending on how the other team bans so it's a lot of it's uh, band dependent and then on defense we're we're kind of more um, we're kind of towards the meta where we run a Jaeger almost every round because that's really important for stopping uh, nades but other than that we kind of just uh, flex around however the attackers really like to play the game and we kind of see what they pick so our main strategy that I use going into the games is we're not going to do anything that's toxic based uh, in the game, like running characters like Jackal um, and Nomad straight out the gate. Uh, I usually wait to see if they do something that would warrant the uh, more toxic operators from coming out uh, during the match. And then we usually more we usually try to adapt and uh, just sometimes try to catch them off guard or do uh, unique things, hold unique angles to uh, get easier kills. 
so that they're doing more of the work for us than us having to fully risk our lives to kill them. I don't really have a, I don't really have really a method of choosing operators. I just kind of choose whoever I like to play, and then see if I get screamed at for it. Do you guys usually have? Do you guys have anybody on the team that plays the same operator almost every round? Like that's their only role. <laughs> so, um, on our team, basically Mayhem only plays IQ and only IQ. Um, this past match, uh, IQ was actually banned all three maps in a row. I have no clue why the other team banned him, by, banned her all three ops in a row, um, all three maps in a row. That was, it was, it was actually very weird. Never seen that done before. Um, but so he had to actually play other operators for the first time ever, and that was an interesting experience to say the least. Um, but mainly, I think we usually have um, angles always running the. We always have that thermite Thatcher, so or I think he's that's on, uh, Habana. Yeah, or Habana or Habana with us, so. The hard breaches and Thatcher are ran every round, and then IQ if it's not banned. That was a that was a weird game. So I was not expecting an IQ ban that game, to be honest. So. Now, for you guys, when you when you get on to practice or when you get on to play, and you don't have the whole team on, what is the best way for you to improve? Do you just play uh, like do you just solo queue some ranked games? Are there any aim training, other things like that that you work on? So I mean, now when I'm in college, I don't play uh, siege as much as I used to, so I'm actually, I'm trying to keep myself unranked on the game so that no one can really tell my skill level when they look at me in pregame lobby. Um, so that's kind of one thing that I do. So I just usually run terrorist hunts. I uh, I generally just complete my challenges that Ubisoft gives me every week uh, when I get on to warm up, and I usually just listen to music and try to um, basically get through as many terrorist hunts uh, as possible, as fast as possible. I don't know. For me, I just... I just kind of just play it, like, on myself. Uh, for me, uh, I just usually just slap into, like, unranked. Once I get ranked, like, one season, I just go, all right, I seem fine at this rank, and I just level myself up a bit. Other than that, I don't really do much on Siege other than just screw around and play, like, whatever new discovery mode they release. What leagues are you guys playing in, and have you had any official matches yet? Um, so the league that we're playing in is it's called Collegiate Rainbow Six. And uh, we've had uh, five matches now uh, in the uh, in the league. So we our first four matches were um, basically like seeding matches because the entire <clears throat> the entire uh, league is ran Swiss style. So basically, you're just playing someone with the same record as you. Um, we finished two and two in phase one, which was like the placement for your division. And so that we ended up getting placed in like the upper seeds of open division, which is the third division. And then we played our first match in the um, open division th uh, this past Sunday. And we ended up losing uh, two to one and actually a really close match. How do you guys use the dig space in, in your practices? Uh, so most of the players on our team, they all have their own computers, either in their dorm rooms or in their apartments. Um, I'm the only one that actually has to go to the dig center to play. So I uh, I generally just go in there. There's usually one or two other people in there either playing League of Legends or sometimes I see another guy playing Siege who's on Team 1. I just kind of go in there, play my match, and then leave. There's not usually uh, any problems. I've only seen the Overwatch team in there once. So, uh, and that was the time I was yeah. there. <laughs> Our team mainly, uh, if we do have a practice that we'll have, um, I have a 3-in-1 laptop with... Um, a pen so I basically can draw our strats onto just pictures and then kind of show uh, rotations and stuff better so I feel that that's like a more effective practice strategy for us because instead of having to take the three minutes every round to run through the same strat instead of doing something one strat in a half an hour we can do it in about five minutes and I can answer any questions that anyone has immediately and show them um, really what goes on when you do like when one action occurs, what the outcome of that action is, you can show it much better from a top view than if you're like actually in the game. That's actually really interesting and a good point, I think, for all games to consider using like a 3-in-1 laptop for something such as that. Are there any pro teams that you watch their demos or their VODs and try and learn from? Um, the only time I've ever watched a pro team, um, I don't even actually remember their name, but... It was on for a map that I don't generally like that much um, in the game called Consulate. Um, this team developed a strategy that never lost a single round when it was played in Pro League. 
And so I did watch their like the breakdown of their strategy um, on YouTube, and that was the that's probably the only one that I've actually watched like um, for like in depth analysis of uh, what they do. And I mainly for I don't really usually watch pro league. I actually watch more of uh, amateur league because I do have my own league, so I get to see what those teams do, and I know that those players watch pro league, so I get to see a lot of those strats um, from pro league in the amateur games but how they're adapted to and how they're differently played so that when I do get to a collegiate match, sometimes I see things that I don't generally see. And so from watching adaptations of pro league strats, I find that it's a little bit more effective for me because I can kind of see how they broke it down and what areas the strat they enjoyed like in to play with and what areas they didn't like about the strat. I think Mayhem, do you watch any uh, pro teams or any pro league? No, nah, I just do dumb stuff and it just turns out to turn out well. <laughs> I don't know. I just do. I just be like, I wonder if this works, and then I do it. And I go, Oh, I guess it does. And then that's just pretty much what we do for the rest of the game. Do you guys have a favorite team or a favorite player or a favorite streamer? Even any uh, of the three? Let's see. Favorite team? I can't really think of. Let's see. I guess Liquid, since they're like basically like the main team. Almost everybody knows. Uh, uh, favorite player for Siege would probably be King George or Shroud. I guess. The Shroud's like literally, I guess, one of my favorite people to watch. Uh, I don't really have. I guess my favorite team for Rainbow would probably be Ents. Um, I used to like Rise Nation, but they're no longer in Pro League. Um, and then my favorite player, I don't. I guess um, Kanto for G two is probably my favorite player because he does the. He every time he does something in the game, he always has a reason why he did it. And he's kind of like I am where he likes to test um, certain things and just see how the opponent reacts to it to basically read judgments about how they're thinking. And so once you get inside the enemy's head, you can really get inside everything that they're going to try to do. And you can basically, right when you see their strat, you basically know exactly what they're going to do. So once you know that, there's no surprises. And really there's no way for you to, you have the full advantage going into the round. And so it's less likely that you're going to lose a round if you, have, if you can figure out how they're thinking. For you guys, what has gaming uh, or R6 uh, specifically taught you? So I guess to elaborate on it, like teamwork, communication, anything along those lines that you have built your skill in outside of school here at ISU? Um, I guess for me, like conciseness and precision are really important because, um, I mean, I carry that to my everyday life because, I mean, in Siege, if if you aren't precise and you don't, like, hold, hold a flank or, like, put... A specific like claymore down where you're supposed to put it um nine times out of ten you you mess you lose the round because of some small mistake that you made so kind of like going through and being precise and like just making sure that you've hit all the check marks before you do something is uh is really important and that's really helped me in my everyday life for someone just getting into r6 what, what advice would you give them um i'd say if you have good gun skill, um, just learn the maps, and then when you die, watch the kill cam and see where you're getting killed from, or um, kind of like read how opponents react to some things that you do. And so if you know the maps and you, you have the gun skill, you can basically be successful in Siege on a, uh, on a personal level. I would say do every possible dumb thing you could possibly think of you can do in game and then learn from it because what are you gonna do what is people gonna get mad you're a new player like uh, like to the community the community's toxic but like literally if you just don't listen to that and just have fun with it i'd say you would get you would get pretty far you do pretty great so that's how it was for me unfortunately that's all the time we have for now thank you zach and royce for talking with us today if you're listening to us through youtube make sure to like and subscribe or give us a follow if you're listening on soundcloud Either way, make sure you catch next week's episode where we talk with OGesus, a member of the Counter-Strike team. I'm Skylar, and this has been The Bird Herd.